This test requires the use of specimen molds. The two inch cube specimen should be tight fitting and have no more than three cube compartments. Mold should be separable and no more than two parts and should be positively held together. The mold should be made of hard metal not attacked by cement mortar. For new molds, the Rockwell hardness number of the metal should be no less than 55 HRB. The sides of the mold should be sufficiently rigid to prevent spreading and warping. The interior faces of the mold should be plain surfaces and conform to the tolerances specified in ASTM C109. A trowel is needed having a steel blade four to six inches in length with straight edges. The temperature and humidity conditions for field molded specimens should be prescribed for curing cylinders in practice ASTM C31. The test sample consists of approximately 1500 milliliters of grout and should be representative of the material in the mixer. To prepare the mold, apply a thin coating of release agent to the interior faces of the mold and non-absorptive base plates. Apply oils and greases using an impregnated cloth or other suitable means. Wipe the mold faces and the base plates with the cloth as necessary to remove any excess release agent. The goal is to achieve a thin, even coating on the interior surfaces. When using an aerosol lubricant, spray the release agent directly onto the mold faces and base plate from a distance of six to eight inches to achieve complete coverage. After spraying, wipe the surface with a cloth as necessary to remove any excess aerosol lubricant. The residue coating should be sufficient to allow a distinct fingerprint to remain following light finger pressure. Seal the surfaces where the halves of the mold join by applying a coating of light cup grease, such as petrolatum. The amount should be sufficient to extrude slightly when the two halves are tightened together. Remove any excess grease with a cloth. Seal molds to their base plates with a watertight sealant. Use microcrystalline wax. Paraffin wax is permitted as a sealant with molds that clamp to the base plate. Liquefy the wax by heating it to a temperature between 230 and 248 degrees Fahrenheit. Affect a watertight seal by applying the liquefied sealant at the outside contact lines between the mold and its base plate. A three gang cube mold constitutes one test set. Provide at least one test set for each age at which strength is to be determined, but not less than two sets. Fill each mold in the set halfway. Puddle each with a gloved finger five times to release entrapped air. Fill the mold and puddle again. Bring the excess grout to the center and finish the surface by cutting off the excess with the straight edge of the trowel held vertically and drawn across the top of the mold with a sawing motion. Place the cover plate of the three gang mold, taking care that the grout or loose grains of sand do not prevent seating of the plate. Place a mass of seven kilograms or 15 pounds on each cover plate or fix the cover plates with the molds with attached clamps. Immediately upon completion of demolding, place laboratory specimens in a moist room and cure in accordance with the applicable portions of ASTM C109. Store field specimens and cure in accordance with ASTM C31. The test machine used to conduct the compression test should meet the requirements of ASTM C109 and specimens should be tested within the limit specified in ASTM C109 after removal from curing. After the cubes have been demolded and cured, they should be wiped to a surface dry condition and remove any loose particles from the faces that will be in contact with the bearing blocks. Check the square of the faces by applying a straight edge. Grind the face if necessary to remove appreciable curvature. Measure cubes to ensure that the actual dimensions match the nominal two inch dimensions. 
If the cross-sectional area of a specimen varies more than 1.5% from the nominal, then the actual area should be used to compute the compressive strength. Carefully place the specimen in the testing machine below the center of the upper bearing block. Specimens should be placed such that the load is applied to specimen faces that were in contact with the true plane surfaces of the mold. Utilize procedures and load rates in accordance with ASTM C109 to load test the cubes to failure. Compressive strength is determined by dividing the total maximum load from the test machine by the area of the loaded surface. Average compression strength for each set of grout specimens should be rounded to the nearest 10 PSI. Tests should be calculated at 7 and 28 days of age unless otherwise required. Report should include average compressive strength, identification including tendon number, test age, and whether sample was obtained in the laboratory or field. If tested in the field, include description of curing procedure and temperature.